It is getting cold, guys. Like, it was 70 degrees last week, and now I'm wearing a jacket and freezing. It's like 35, 40 degrees. This cold front is no joke. They're calling for snow later on, which will be really interesting to see if that actually happens. But today is Wednesday, and that means it is time for a Waterfowl Wednesday. And I think this is actually the first Waterfowl Wednesday of the year, and I think I've got a pretty good one. Today, we are going to be talking about five items that every duck hunter needs to have when they go out duck hunting. I get all kinds of questions about what kind of gear I bring with me, what kind of stuff I like to use. And today, I put together five things that I think everybody should have and take with them when they're out duck hunting. These are all items I really like and I use them quite frequently. So stick with me and let me know in the comments if I miss anything during this video. Before we get into anything else, be sure to leave me a thumbs up and if you're not subscribed to the channel, be sure to hit the subscribe button. I'm coming out with a lot of videos. I think I'm posting daily at this point for the next three or four weeks. So uh, you got new content coming every single day. Hit that subscribe button. Let's see if we can get this video up to 600 likes. Can we do that? Okay, now this first item is one that I use a lot because I have a lot of camera gear with me and that is a dry bag. So this one, I don't even remember how many liters this one is. It's a really big dry bag, but I like dry bags because when I take the kayak out and go duck hunting, I don't have room for a big blind bag and I don't want to keep all my stuff inside a blind bag. I want to keep it dry because there's a really high likelihood with paddling and all of that that your stuff will get wet. So I use this really big dry bag to hold all my cameras, maybe an extra jacket. Like when I paddle in, I usually put my big hunting coat inside the bag. It stays dry and I don't get hot while I'm paddling. That's why I like this really big bag so that I can put a lot of stuff in it. So camera gear, my shotgun shells, my calls, my camera gear, all of that goes inside this bag and it has been a wonderful piece of equipment for me. So if you don't have a dry bag, be sure to pick one up. They're not very expensive and they are very useful. Now, I know a few years ago when I was hunting a lot of public refuges and there wasn't really any dry ground to sit on, and I didn't have one of these. I'm wishing now that I did have one at that time because this would have been a really important piece of equipment. And I would have honestly just used this as my blind bag. A couple of things to note. You want to have one with a strap because it's really handy to be able to just throw this over your shoulder and walk in if you're using it as your blind bag. I also use this strap to attach this to my kayak so then if something were to happen and this comes out, it's not gonna be unattached from the kayak itself. So the way you use one of these, you put all your stuff inside, you give it a couple of rolls down so then it's waterproof, and then you just clip it together, and boom, everything inside the bag is watertight, and it's keeping everything nice and safe. That is a very handy piece of equipment, and I want to encourage all of you guys to pick up one of these as well. Moving forward, you need a good headlamp. I've used cheapy, crappy headlamps, and then I got this really nice one, and I mean, I think this one was only like 30, 40 bucks, and it made a world of difference. Had great power, I was able to see a lot more stuff at nighttime, and uh, you, you really can't complain about having a good headlamp. So, I would encourage you guys, do some research, find a headlamp that you like, and one that has a pretty high lumen count, because the lumens, the higher the number, the brighter the light is. I personally like really bright lights. I hate messing around with lights and not being able to see when I'm setting out decoys. Get you a nice headlamp. You're gonna be able to see everything in the morning before the sun comes up. Get those decoys set right. Get everything adjusted in the blind. Get a good headlamp. It's not a huge expense and you'll thank me later. Every duck hunter needs a good headlamp. One more thing is make sure when you buy your headlamp, some of them have these bigger batteries that aren't like AA, AAA, whatever. Make sure to pick up batteries if it doesn't come with them and then uh, you won't have to scramble to find some batteries. And this headlamp is rechargeable. So every night before I go hunting, I plug my headlamp in and it's fully charged and ready to go for the next day. Yeah, headlamps, really good piece of equipment. Now, this next item I have two examples of, and they're for two different reasons. They're the same thing, but I like them both for different reasons, and that is gloves. What I have here are some gloves. These are leather gloves. Absolutely love them, and I use them a lot in the mornings when I'm brushing in blinds and wear them during the hunt. 
I'm not a huge fan of those big bulky gloves. And if I'm hunting, I'm most likely not wearing gloves while I'm calling and shooting, but I need a good pair of leather gloves for when I'm cutting grass for blinds, brushing them in and doing all that kind of stuff. So get yourself a good pair of leather gloves to do some of that work. Now this pair of gloves is completely different. These are decoy gloves. You can get these things for like 15 bucks and uh, for freezing cold days when you're breaking ice or you're picking up decoys, you really want a pair of these. I've done it before where I pick them up and break ice without any gloves on and my hands are freezing. These will keep your hands dry, but they'll also keep them warm. I think these have some thin insulation in them and they fit all the way up to your elbow so you can reach down deep in the water. I've used these for about two seasons now and I absolutely love them and I want to encourage you guys to check out a good pair of decoy gloves. You got to protect your hands and when your hands get cold and wet, it's no fun. A lot of people, either their hands get cold first or their toes get cold first. Me, it's my hands. My toes can go a million hours, but my hands, the second they get cold, I'm done. So I try to take really good care of my hands by using gloves and by using hand warmers in my pockets. So you need a good pair of work gloves, but you also need a good pair of decoy gloves and then you're set to go hunting. Now this next item is one that you can go hunt without and you know you don't use it every time you go, but the times that you need it and the times you use it when you need it, it makes a world of difference. And that my friends is a jerk rig. Now this is a lifetime decoys jerk rig. I really like it because it doesn't really twist, doesn't cut into your hands too bad and it's got clips to where you can adjust where your decoys are. See, it's made out of the same material as the Lifetime decoy rigs are, that coated cable material, but it also comes with these drops, and these drops are gang rig clips. Let's see if I can give you guys an example here. And so you find a spot where you want your decoy, your decoy is attached to that. You just pinch it, put it on there, and boom, you can customize where your decoys are sitting on the rig. And uh, I've used this, it's done amazing. It will last a million years and uh, lifetime decoys, you really can't beat them. So jerk rig, doesn't matter which one you use. It just puts motion on the water when there's no wind to move your decoys and it makes them look a lot more lively. I know last season we had a couple of goose hunts where we broke out the jerk rig and before we did that, the geese weren't really committing. They weren't really wanting it because it was super still day. We got that jerk rig out, started pulling that as the geese were coming, and man, it made a world of difference. They just committed right away, right down into the hole. So, you may not use the jerk rig every time you go out, but make sure to have it when you need it because it can make or break a duck hunt. So I've got one more item, but like I said at the beginning of the video, if I didn't cover something that you think every duck hunter needs to have in their bag, leave it in the comments below. I wanted to keep it down to five. There's a million different things you could take with you. And I tried to think about five items that I think everybody needs to have when they're duck hunting. You guys tend to have a lot of really good ideas. And so if you're looking for some other items to keep in your bag, check out the comments as well, because everybody who comments usually leaves some pretty helpful advice. Now this last item, I know a lot of you guys have, but this is something that if you're new to duck hunting, you might not think about needing this kind of item. And that, my friends, is a duck tote. So this is an item that you use to carry your ducks out. You hang them all on here. Let's say you go out shooting your limiter mallards. You got five mallards. You stick them on here. You can throw them around your neck, take a cool picture, throw them over your shoulder, carry them out. And I've forgotten this in the past and it makes it super difficult to walk out of a public marsh without a duck strap when you shoot a limit. Um, you know, two seasons ago, Blake and I went on a hunt on public land and we forgot duck totes. And so we had to, we walked probably three quarters of a mile in and we had to walk three quarters of a mile out carrying limited ducks with no tote. So pick up one of these. They're not very expensive. You can get one for under 20 bucks and you will use it every single time you go. You can hang your birds on it in the blind, make sure everybody's birds are separate and you're not mixing bag limits. And um, you know, they're, they're just a really awesome tool. And I highly encourage you guys to pick one of these up if you don't have one. This is a Tango Free Strap and it came in my hunter's haul box. 
I think this has got to be one of my favorite straps that I've used. But you can get them from all kinds of places and at all kinds of different price ranges. I've got one bonus item and that is these. If you guys don't know what these are, these are earplugs. They go in your ears to protect your hearing. Duck hunting without hearing protection can cause hearing loss and it will cause hearing loss. So do something about it, be proactive. It's not fun losing your hearing. So I use these Tetra Alpha Shields, they're electronic hearing protection. Um, I absolutely love them. I made a video on them in the past and they just fit right snug in my ear like that. I'm able to hear conversations in the blind but they also protect my hearing and I'm able to hear everything that's going on. Um, with these little foam plugs, everything is dampened, but with these, just gunshots and loud calling are dampened. I wanna encourage you guys to take a look at getting some hearing protection, whether it be these or whether it be these or some other thing. Just find a way to put something to protect your hearing in your blind bag, but also remember to take it out of your blind bag and put it in your ears, because it's not gonna protect your hearing while it's in your bag. I hope this was helpful for some of you guys who are starting to look at getting into duck hunting and wanting to know what kind of gear you should get. Um, like I said, these are just five items that I think are essentials, but uh, check out the comments down below for other people's essential items. You guys can follow me on my social media wherever I put it on this screen. And uh, you can follow me, I got Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, and Facebook. Follow me on there and stay up to date with what's going on. But that's all I've got for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I will catch you guys on the next one.